Hi, I'm Matt Eland, and this is Is Die Hard a Christmas Movie? Let's Ask Azure. About a month ago or so, my wife and I were just hanging out watching TV, and I was cruising Reddit, as I do, and I found a, you know, funny meme about uh, Die Hard and it being a Christmas movie, and uh, it, it struck me in that moment that I had never asked my wife what her opinion was on Die Hard. And so I look at her and I'm like, hey, hey, honey, what do you think about Die Hard? Is, is it a Christmas movie or not? And she just kind of looks up at me and gives me one of those cautious glances and says, no, why would it be a Christmas movie? It's an action movie. And I, I turn back and I'm like, well, so there's this theory, and this is one I happen to agree with, uh, that Die Hard is a Christmas movie because, well, number one, it takes place on Christmas Eve. Uh, number two, it takes place at a Christmas party. And then number three, it has not one, not two, but three classic Christmas songs, as well as, you know, Christmas themes throughout the movie. And finally, it's about reconciling a relationship between a husband and a wife. And that's really the core of, of, of what's driving, you know, John McClane and his character. And she looks back at me and she, she thinks a little bit and she says, well, so it was released in July. It has a kill count of 23 and it has over 50 F-bombs in it. Also, what's wrong with you? So I didn't exactly persuade my wife in that moment. Um, and uh, it was one of those things where I'm like, okay, well, fine, let's just move on. Um, but something struck me. And the prior week, I had passed uh, the Microsoft Azure AI Fundamental Certification, AI 900. And it covers, it's a lovely little certification, and it covers a lot of little things, but machine learning is one of those, those aspects that it covers. Um, and I thought, well, huh, wait a minute. This seems like a classic classification problem. I wonder if we can't get Microsoft Azure to take a look at some data about movies and tell us whether or not Die Hard is a Christmas movie. And so I spent a weekend doing that. And this talk, I'm going to tell you about my process in that and the result of that at the end. Uh, but my hope is that you're going to take a look at this and you're going to learn a little bit more about data science. You're going to learn a little bit more about Microsoft Azure and what we can do with that. Um, so stay tuned. I hope you enjoy this talk. So I started planning on how I wanted to approach this task. Now, I realized I needed to do three basic things. First, I needed to gather enough data that I could feed it into Azure for it to compute a, uh, uh, a trained model. Uh, mo a model is something that it's going to be able to um, predict uh, something or classify something in one way or another. The second thing is I need to actually give that data to Azure and tell it how to run itself, uh, what parameters to use, and evaluate its results. And basically repeat and tweak things until I got a model that performed well enough on data it already knew about. And once I had something that performed well enough, then I'd move on to step three, which is basically deploy this as a working machine learning solution and send it a new data point that it has never seen before, specifically Die Hard. And that's gonna give me a result. So high level, we're gonna get some data, we're gonna train a model on that data, and we're gonna deploy that model once it's sufficiently uh, performant and feed it that one new ro row of data that's never seen before, Die Hard, and see whether or not it thinks it's a Christmas movie. That's the high level approach. Now, let's, uh, let's get into the details a little bit more. With machine learning, there's three basic types of things you can do. You can do regression where you're predicting a value such as a stock price or a temperature. You can do clustering where you're trying to find groups of things based on uh, really their own data. Uh, and you can do a classification problem, which you're trying to find what class or category something should belong to. Now this is a classification problem, Die Hard, uh, figuring out whether a movie is a Christmas movie or a non-Christmas movie. So with a classification problem, that is a form of supervised learning. And with any form of supervised learning, that means that we need to provide some data that has labels. So our data is going to be uh, basically rows of movies in this case, uh, and it's going to have a bunch of features associated with each, each row. The features might be uh, the runtime of the movie, um, whether or not it's a action movie, whether or not it's a comedy movie, uh, the month it was released in, the year it was released in, uh, that kind of thing. And all these little features like that. And there's one column in our data set that's really different. And it's not a feature, 
but it's the label. It's the thing we're trying to predict. And that's going to be whether or not this movie should be considered a Christmas movie. So my plan was to gather a set of movies that would include Die Hard and some Christmas movies and some non-Christmas movies. And it'd have enough data about each one of these. Then I'd get my data into a state where I could feed it into Azure. And then I'd feed it into Azure, let Azure learn the relationships between these data points based on the features, see if it can come up with some sort of a formula or formulae uh, to evaluate, given a set of characteristics of, about, uh, of a movie, should this movie be considered a Christmas movie or a non-Christmas movie? And once I had all of that, then I'm going to give it the data for Die Hard, and it's going to spit out either a 1, meaning it's a Christmas movie, or a 0, meaning it's not. So that was my plan. Okay, so now I knew I had a plan of attack for uh, providing the data I needed to Azure and getting a good result and being able to answer this question. Now I need to figure out how I was going to get the data. So I had two basic problems here. First, I needed a list of movies that had a lot of detail about each movie, enough that Azure could potentially uh, find relationships between these things and whether or not something was a Christmas movie. And secondly, I needed to find out whether something should be considered a Christmas movie for training purposes. Now, remember, classification is a problem that uses uh, labeled data. That means that we need to provide for all of our movies whether or not that movie should be considered a Christmas movie while Azure is training it, uh, training that machine learning model, uh, because it's got to know whether or not this should be considered a Christmas movie in order to calculate how accurate that routine is going to be. So I decided, well, how am I going to figure out whether something should be considered a Christmas movie? I mean, I could say what my opinion is, but we're trying to not measure my opinion. I can get my wife's opinion, but we're not really trying to measure her opinion either. We're trying to remove it as much bias as possible. And so I decided that the best way that, of, that I knew of figuring out whether something should be considered a Christmas movie or not is if I go out there and I look at popular opinion and I say, hey, let's find the top five lists of Christmas movies. Okay, Go out and do a search. And with that data that comes back, we're going to go come and, and take a look at those lists. And we're going to look over each one of those those uh, uh, movies that's listed on, on those top five lists. And some of these lists were pretty large, almost uh, 60, 70 uh, uh, entries. And we're going to come up with a count of times that each individual movie showed up on this list. So we're going to come up with a count of things. And if something showed up on at least two of those lists, it should be considered a Christmas movie. And if it only showed up on one of those lists or it didn't show up at all on any of these five lists, it should it should not be considered a Christmas movie. Yeah. So this is how I wanted to find uh, data. Uh, and so I came up with, with the with these answers. And I think it came up with about 48 movies that should be considered Christmas movies by these by this approach. Uh, and so I charted it. And you know you got some favorites like Christmas Story, Bad Santa, Elf, Home Alone, Wonderful Life, Love Actually, Miracle on 34th Street, uh, you know things like that that showed up on all five of those lists. Definite Christmas movies. And you had a number of things that showed up on four and three, and quite a few that showed up on only two of these. And this this generally passed the eye check. Now the interesting thing is that Die Hard actually showed up on four out of five of those Christmas movie lists. Uh, I think only Thrillist was the one that didn't include it. And that site actually had a paragraph in there talking about, sorry, John McClane, we're not including you because, or whatever it was. So all five of these lists mentioned Die Hard explicitly. Um, the only four of them listed it as one of the top Christmas movies. So by this approach, Die Hard really should be considered a Christmas movie um, just on its own. But we don't really want to measure popular opinion uh, on Die Hard. We want to measure... Uh, what machine learning has to say about it. So this is what I used uh, for determining whether or, some, some, whether or not something should be considered a Christmas movie while training the data. Now I knew whether or not something could be considered a Christmas movie. Now I need to find a set of data that would include all of those movies I did, identified as Christmas movies, plus Die Hard, plus a bunch of other movies so that Azure could learn what isn't a Christmas movie, which is you know equally important. So uh, whenever I'm looking for data, um, there's a couple places I will check. Uh, first is I might check Azure's uh, open data sets. Uh, those are pretty cool, but it didn't have the data I needed. 
I went instead to Kaggle, Kaggle.com, which is a data science community. They have a lot of open data sets that you can find, uh, various quality. Uh, but I decided to find, hey, what do you have for, for movies? And there were a number of things um, out there, but I ultimately decided to go with a data set by uh, Runak Banik. Uh, apologies if I'm mispronouncing that name. Um, but he had this, this data, data set called the, uh, the Movies data set. It had a lot of cool things in there, uh, and it seemed to be sufficient detail for my needs. Um, and so I took a look at that data, and it looked to have a lot of things in there that would be really helpful for, for me, such as um, whether or not the, the budget of a movie, the genres of a movie, uh, it had information about the runtime, it had the IMDb ID, which I needed in order to um, correlate this to whether or not it was a Christmas movie um, my, from my research from earlier. Uh, it also had information about all sorts of ratings for that movie, uh, so I could find what the community is voting on something to see if popularity has something to do with whether a movie is a Christmas movie or not. Uh, and it did have information on various keywords that a movie might have as well. Now I had my data, the first thing I needed to do was start investigating that data. You can't just take data off the internet and just run with it. Uh, you need to start sort of start to do some uh, analysis of that data. Now, there's a couple things you might want to do. You might want to do some statistical analysis. Um, and you, the other thing you might want to do is just doing some uh, just sort of exploratory uh, visualization of that data. Just try to see what, what trends you can find. Um, so here is my uh, Jupyter Notebook uh, in Visual Studio Code. Uh, Jupyter Notebooks are a Python uh, notebook that's very interactive. You give it little blocks of code and you can run those individual blocks. So here's a block that's basically loading the movie's metadata from that data set I downloaded. Um, and it's it's parsing out a couple things. I have it uh, making sure we're only looking at released movies and um, we are going to be uh, extracting some data about the year and month and quarter uh, as well as translating the budget to an acceptable value. So I can run that by hitting control enter on that cell and it's actually gonna go in and load that data and uh, the very last statement it runs is gonna give me uh, basically what I see below this. So I can kind of take a look at the top five results and I can see the columns uh, that came back in that data set. Um, and I can kind of look over things. I can see there's Toy Story and a little bit about the overview column, a little about the spoken languages, um, things like that. So I can start to poke around and see really what's going on with that data set. Um, but next thing I wanted to do is make sure that my labels for my prior step uh, came through. So I had extracted out an, a list of IMDB um, values uh, for movies that I should consider Christmas movies based on that approach that we had talked about earlier with the, the five lists. Uh, and then I'm just gonna apply uh, a function to each row that's gonna set whether or not that row is a Christmas movie. So that took a little bit over two minutes, uh, but uh, it seems to have completed. Um, I didn't have any sort of a visual step at the very end of that, so we don't get an output. Um, but now that I have my, my labels applied, I can go in and I can run a, a de describe on this uh, data frame. By the way, this is using a pandas data frame, which is a, a very popular Python library for uh, doing almost Excel-like uh, manipulation of data. So this is giving me all sorts of different columns. Uh, let's look at all my numeric columns, and it's giving me the number of rows, the average standard deviation, and then basically interquartile ranges. Uh, if you're familiar with statistical concepts here. So this is helping me understand my data a little bit more. Uh, there are about 4,500 uh, rows in our data set, it looks like. Um, and what's really interesting here, there's a couple things that are interesting, but one of those things that, that's probably worth highlighting is this uh, the average value of whether or not something is a Christmas movie. This is going to be a range between 0 and 1. And 0 meaning it's not a Christmas movie, and 1 meaning it is a Christmas movie. You can kind of look at this and say, okay, well, <laughs> most things are not Christmas movies, just looking by, at this. Um, it's it's 0.1% uh, of the data set is Christmas movies, which is going to be a problem for us later on. So that's something that we'll need to worry about because we have such a small population of things that actually should be considered Christmas movies here. Uh, but this can really give you a, a broad sense of, of data here, um, but it's not the only way of understanding your data. Uh, because we can do uh, things like box plots and histograms and start to get more of an 
uh, really a feel for what the data looks like. So here I am running a box plot on uh, the average vote that, some, that a, a movie might have, whether it's a Christmas movie or not. So here this red one looks like uh, our Christmas movies. Um, and the average rating that they get from voters is somewhere between a 5.4 and an 8, just on average. Uh, it's a box plot. Versus a non-Christmas movie might go all the way for, to 10 uh, to 0, it looks like. So it looks like there's some pretty significant variation for non-Christmas movies, and that, that re uh, results in these outliers that we might have to, uh, uh, to prune out of our data set just to make sure that we're getting a pretty comparable uh, set of non-Christmas movies and Christmas movies because we don't want to get feed it only duds. Um, we want to feed it movies that were popular enough to get onto that list. So we'll probably have to do some popularity filtering and just filter down to things that are in a certain range of popularity based on this data. Uh, we can also take a look at the distribution of years and uh, the release years. So we can see that uh, our Christmas movies uh, came out somewhere between 1940 and uh, 2015 based on these lists. Some of these lists were kind of old. Um, so I don't include anything past the end of our list. So we'll probably also want to clamp uh, the non-Christmas movies to the same year range just so that we're comparing apples to apples here. You can start to look at the month distribution as well. This is not necessarily to do any filtering, it's just to see, hey, is there maybe a relationship here between the, the month a movie was, was released in and whether or not it's a Christmas movie? And you can see that most of the Christmas movies are released from uh, month five all the way to uh, December, but the majority of them are, are released in November, it looks like. Uh, versus uh, non-Christmas movies are released you know, pretty much year-round, uh, maybe slightly towards the back half of the year, but uh, pretty evenly distributed throughout the year. Um, so you can say, hey, release month probably has something to do with whether something should be considered a Christmas movie, but it's, not, uh, it's certainly not going to exclude something from being a Christmas movie. It's just it might trend to be more of a Christmas movie if it happens to be released near the end of the year. Um, so you can take a look at some other things. So I was curious about the budget and revenue columns and whether I could use those. And what I found was that a lot of these movies seem to have revenues around zero. Uh, and this actually wound up being a, uh, a flaw in the data set. Uh, it also told me I needed to watch out for like some, some of these really extreme outlying uh, cases here. So budget did wind up being an unreliable column uh, and I had to exclude that. The same vein, revenue wound up being pretty unreliable as well. Uh, with the majority of things, actually, this is all of our released movies, um, the median value was zero for revenue. So that's just a giant red flag that I can't use that column. If I had tried to use that column, uh, it probably would have skewed the results pretty significantly. So this is the value of exploratory data analysis. It's going to help you understand your data a little bit more. So let's talk about cleaning this data. So when once we have our data and we know uh, a little bit more about it, we can start to make some intelligent decisions about what columns we might want to drop. So I'll walk you through some of the decisions I made early on. I wound up tweaking this a little bit later on uh, based on some of, the, some of the results that I'm going to show you in a little bit. Um, but the first thing I'm doing is I'm actually loading up my data into a pandas data frame. It's an Excel-like uh, format. And then I'm dropping some columns I know I don't want to care about. Uh, I'm not going to care about what uh, franchise it's a part of, its internet homepage, <laughs> the original language or title, uh, the, the image for the poster, uh, or the production companies or countries. Um, I don't care about the trailer. Uh, we did discover that the revenue and budget were unreliable. Uh, so those got dropped. I dropped the uh, I dropped anything that was not a, a released movie uh, because if a movie wasn't released, then it shouldn't really be compared to something that was. Uh, and all of our Christmas movies are released, and as was Die Hard. Um, and then I started doing some pruning, and so I started saying, hey, let's only keep things that are within the same popularity range as our Christmas movies. Let's then drop these columns so that the machine learning algorithm is not going to encounter these columns. They were useful for filtering things out. Uh, let's introduce some columns for the year, month, and quarter, uh, just so the machine learning uh, algorithm has a chance of seeing those that data a little easier. 
Uh, this is called feature engineering. Though uh, I should note that automated um, ML in Azure can do this uh, automatically for you. And you can also do this with the designer in uh, uh, the designer workflows. Uh, I then clamp on the year. So I only want things uh, that are gonna be in the same year range as our Christmas movies. So this is part of the value of exploratory data analysis. Uh, the runtime of movies actually was pretty obscenely large. Um, like there were a number of outliers on runtime that were just really, really, really long. I think there were like entire seasons of baseball recorded in this, in this data set for some reason. Uh, and so I said, hey, if it's longer than two and a half hours, I just want to exclude it. Let's keep our, our length to standard length movies, please. Uh, and then I needed to do some uh, some coercing on a few different columns in our data set because they, they weren't uh, interpreted correctly. Uh, I then went in and extracted the languages uh, for each row. I said, hey, let's find the, the languages. And just for the sake of this experiment, we're only going to keep things that were released in an English form at some point in time. So if the spoken languages in the movie didn't include English, we're going to drop it from our data set. So we're trying to filter out things that are not Christmas movies um, and are not really in the same vein as what we would consider a normal movie because uh, we really want to filter out, kind of compare normal box office movies to uh, Christmas box office, office movies, if that makes sense. Uh, doing a little bit of feature engineering here. So we're taking a look at the genre column, which uh, the genre column has a little bit of JSON-like stuff. And so we're, we're gonna say, hey, we got this adventure and romance and comedy and things can have multiple genres. So when we encounter something, we're gonna split its genres. We're gonna start introducing these columns for, is it an action movie? Is it an adventure movie? Is it a crime movie? That kind of a thing. And the thought was that uh, Azure might find some relationships between some of these things and whether or not something was a Christmas movie. So a family movie might be more likely to be a Christmas movie. A crime might be movie might be less likely to be a Christmas movie. Uh, things like that. So making it a little easier for the machine learning algorithm to make intelligent decisions around this. Um, so my thought was these genres plus the release month plus the quarter plus the uh, the year, uh, you know, that might be enough for it to figure out whether something should be considered a Christmas movie or not. Uh, we're then setting whether or not something is a Christmas movie just for our training purposes. Because uh, remember, we need to provide a label for the machine learning algorithm to uh, to to look at and identify. So that's our is Christmas movie column, and that's based on if it was an ISB, I, uh, sorry, IMDb ID uh, that was included in our uh, list. And now that we have our data that's cleaned, we can start to export it to a CSV file. Uh, and we can start to do some final manipulation to it. So we're going to fill in any values that are zero. Uh, or that are blank with uh, zeros. So things that might have had missing uh, values for his crime and things like that, we're gonna set their, their value for, for that to zero. Um, we are then going to, to sort of export die hard uh, to a, its own uh, little comma separated value file, just so we have it for reference for later on, because we're gonna need that to evaluate the performance of the trained model. Because remember, um, these models rely on all of these features, right? So is action, is adventure, that things like that. So we need to know this information for Die Hard at the very end of our process so we can call into our model and say, hey, given this set of features, a movie that looks like this, what do you think? Is this a Christmas movie, is it not? So we're putting it in its own little file. And then we are excluding Die Hard from the rest of our results. So from this point on, our data set is not gonna include Die Hard and then whatever we send to, to machine learning uh, to Azure Machine Learning Studio is not going to include Die Hard. Therefore, it's not gonna learn that Die Hard is or isn't a Christmas movie, and it's going to be able to make a, an unbiased uh, decision uh, to that movie the first time it sees it after it has a fully trained model that performs adequately with this training set. set. After that point, we are now just uh, putting in some reference uh, sheets. This is really just for my own debugging purposes. We're combining everything into the same final data set, uh, and then we are just really exporting it to this train test thing. I do have this line here, um, which I didn't originally have. So because we have so few, uh, so few instances of Christmas movies in a data set that's very large, I think we wound up having about 14,000 movies that made the cut still after all that clamping and filtering. 
Um, and only 48 of those were Christmas movies. Because of that, we really needed to start upsampling it. So a movie got repeated. Uh, if it was a Christmas movie, it got uh, repeated multiple times. Uh, actually, 50 times uh, in order to have an adequate proportion of, uh, of Christmas movies in the data set. Now, I didn't strive for 50-50, but I wanted it to be significant enough that you're going to have enough copies of a movie in your training and your verification um, sides of things. So um, there were two approaches I could have done. I could have upsampled the, the, the minority cases, or I could have sort of downsampled the unminority cases, the, the, the normal movies. Um, and it seemed to be best to upsample these, uh, uh, these Christmas movies uh, based on what I read because I could have been dropping some significant movies that would have taught Azure something. Um, so that was my approach, um, but I finished with this train test CSV, and this was the, the file that I had ready for, for use uh, that I could sh show to Azure, and it could actually uh, kick off the machine learning experiments. So let's take a look at that. So this is Azure Machine Learning Studio. Uh, it's the kind of the online portal for um, data science experiments uh, in Azure. Uh, we've, we can see we've got three major links up here. We have a link to notebooks, which are sort of the online shared Jupyter notebooks that you can share with your team. Uh, we've got automated ML, which is what we're going to be in today. Uh, and we've got the designer that has the drag and drop interface for designing experiments. You also have a history of your uh, prior runs, uh, any data sets you've registered before, uh, any trained models that you've come up with, as well as your compute resources. So let's take a look more deeply into compute for a second here. Uh, we've got a few different types of computes. We've got our instances, which are kind of individual machines. This is a uh, low-end CPU I have running. It costs me about eight cents an hour uh, in my uh, region, uh, which is very nice. And I also have a rule set up with this thing to, uh, to turn it off if I forget about it, which is nice. Um, I have a GPU-based thing as well, which is what I ran most of these on. Uh, that costs, I think that one costs about buck 57, uh, but it is a promotional price as well. So that'll likely go up in the future. Um, you can click on this and get into RStudio, VS Code, Jupyter, Jupyter Lab in the cloud, as well as their terminal. So you can use these instances for cloud-based resources if you're running on a low-end machine that doesn't have things installed locally. So that's nice. Uh, you also have compute clusters, which you can, um, set to have a certain number of nodes that can come online and offline and handle you know things at a larger scale. Uh, so this is really what Azure wants you to uh, to be using when you're doing larger scales of, of training and testing and things like that. You have inference clusters, which are more for uh, handling a larger load level while uh, you're getting requests in to, um, uh, to evaluate deployed models. And you have attached compute, so I can actually add in uh, something from Azure Databricks or HD Insight or a virtual machine, other things in Azure, basically. So I can incorporate other aspects of Azure here. But uh, let's go to automated ML. And I get to click on automated ML run. So new automated ML run. Uh, so I can upload uh, a data set. So for example, that CSV that we produced in our uh, cleaning run, uh, I could upload that here. Uh, that does take a while, so I'm not going to show you there. Uh, but we see we have my old uh, training runs here. So I can select, uh, let's say, Die Hard, that original run I ran. And I can click Next. And it's going to ask me to configure uh, what I want in this run. So it groups everything into an experiment. So an experiment is going to have multiple runs, potentially. And you can track the performance over over time. Uh, I have most of mine in Die Hard Christmas. So we'll do that. And this next one is really important, the target column. This is the label. This is what you want it to calculate. So for me, I want it to calculate whether or not it's a Christmas movie. Like that's, that's what I'm trying to predict. You select where you want it to run. Uh, so you can use a compute instance and then set uh, the specific one. Uh, by the way, this is a good time to mention, you don't necessarily need to use Azure's compute resources for this. Uh, if I'm using um, uh, my own uh, computer and I'm running uh, using the Azure ML SDK, I can just track my own experiment and automatically upload the results of it to Azure. But I'm not paying them to use my own com compute resources. I'm only paying them for the storage to store the results of my experiment or to deploy the experiment if I wanted to, to deploy the, the trained model. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, additionally, I believe ML.net 
has some ways of using auto ML. I don't know yet if that has a way of using your own uh, CPU processing resources. Um, if it does, I'm very interested in that as a cheapskate myself that doesn't have uh, any free Azure credits. Um, so that's something I'll be investigating in the future because I really like uh, automated ML. Uh, but let's uh, select this low-end CPU and hit next. Next, you need to tell if you're going to do a classification or regression run or time series forecasting. Uh, note you don't have the option of doing clustering here. So automated ML does not do clustering. And then you can, can select, uh, so I'm gonna, this is a classification run, so we're going to, to do that. We can enable or disable uh, deep learning. Uh, you have some other uh, settings as well. So you can tell it what the most important metric for you is. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Any algorithms that you don't want to, to consider. Um, you can set some additional uh, uh, things on here, such as when it should end, rules about uh, how many to, to run in parallel, that kind of a thing. Uh, you can change some settings for various columns, whether or not a column is even included, uh, how it should be handled, uh, things like that. So it's pretty cool. Uh, I really like this a lot. I, I tend to, instead of disabling things here, I tend to basically just not include data that I don't want Azure Machine Learning Studio to, to even look at. Um, so if I click Next, uh, it will let me uh, configure the validation and things like that. And if I hit Finish, it's going to run it. Uh, but that's going to take a while, and I have some things already made. So let's take a look at some of my prior runs and we'll take a look at the uh, the early metrics that I found. So here we are at the detail screen of one of my early runs. So Azure gives things random names and it gave this machine learning run the name of Sincere Deer, which I find amusing. Um, and it looks like it completed in 15 minutes uh, the morning of Halloween in uh, Eastern time. Uh, it tells us a little bit more about the parameters of it, what it ran on, um, a specific run ID, that kind of thing. It gives us some high-level metrics, and it tells us what uh, algorithm wound up being the best for this one. Uh, it tells us tells me that it was a random forest using a min-max scaler, and I can click on view hyperparameters to get you know a lot more details as to how this thing actually worked. Um, the cool thing about auto automated ML is that I don't necessarily need to know what a min-max scaler in a random forest is. I need to know enough about my data, the problem I'm trying to solve, uh, to give it a data set that's not likely to produce bias and is likely to give it a good result. I need to know how to configure my run. But as far as the hyperparameters for a given algorithm and which algorithms it selects, uh, that's not something I need to be a deep expert in in order to kick off an, uh, a machine learning run. Now, before I deploy something, I should probably maybe look into a little bit more details about what this thing is, uh, but the details aren't actually that important when you're running a, an experiment. Azure is just going to find uh, the one that performs the best and uh, tweak its parameters and, and, and uh, give you the best performing model. So we can click on it and get a little bit more details about this particular model because it tried a lot of different models, uh, but this is the best one, the one that won. Uh, and we can, you can take a look at this and can see, okay, well, how did this particular one work? We can click on explanations and take a closer look at that. Okay, so it looks like this one had a few different important features. The most important feature was the release month, which makes some sense. That's an important factor for something being a Christmas movie, but it's not necessarily the defining factor. Um, we see that whether or not something is a thriller and a comedy movie was also important, as well as whether or not something was an action movie. So we can sort of see that these are some of the things that impact whether a movie should be considered a, a Christmas movie or not. And we can kind of expand it and see a larger set of data. And you can see there's kind of a decline in importance with release month being the main important factor. You now can click, also click on box plot and it will kind of calculate a, a different way of visualizing this for you. So this shows kind of the uh, importance or unimportance of something. So you can see various release months are maybe having a negative impact on whether something should be considered a, uh, uh, a Christmas movie. So it's kind of interesting. So you can start to see what it found important and what it didn't find important. Um, and you know, that's, that's neat because these things are really just sort of black boxes and you want to be able to understand what's going on inside of them. Uh, but equally important is taking a look at the metrics and seeing how something worked. And there's a lot of different metrics in machine learning. Um, and so you can kind of see some pretty cool uh, charts about precision versus recall. Um, the ROC, 
calibration curve, lift curve. Uh, these are all a little bit more involved topics. But the confusion matrix is actually what I would push you towards uh, the most for a classification problem. So the confusion matrix is going to tell you basically, hey, if something was actually a, uh, if it was actually a Christmas movie, what did we think it was? It looks like 11 times here it thought it was a Christmas movie, and three times it didn't think it was a Christmas movie. And we're only looking at a subset of our data here because we kind of divide our data into little chunks um, for evaluation. So it might be helpful just to look more at the normalized data, which is more percentage based. So you start to see that, hey, this is this is performing pretty well on identifying true positives and true negatives. But we do have some issues where things are getting put into the wrong buckets. So it's performing OK, uh, but it's maybe not performing the best. Uh, and so you start to look at this and say, all right, well, this this works, but it's not amazing. Uh, can we do better? And so. I started looking at this and said, well, what can I do better? Can I tweak some uh, some uh, some parameters? Can I enable deep learning? Can I you know, maybe get some more data? And I, I played around with a lot of different things trying to find a, a better result. Um, and we can actually take a look at the ex experiment and just sort of see the history of runs and their various performance. You can kind of see the recall scores of these as they started improving and improving and improving the precision versus recall. So some of these models are very uh, precise and some of these are very uh, high on recall. So this one over here in the upper right is actually pretty good. Um, but let's take a look at some some of the more details of this because I tried a lot of things and the, uh, the performance didn't seem to be improving very much. And so I was getting a little frustrated. I wanted to see if I can find something that performed a little bit better. Uh, and I did wind up ultimately having an epiphany with this. So I started looking at the data and I started asking myself, hey, could I definitely come up with something here that would be uh, valid? Can I definitely look at this data and, and start to maybe have a guess at whether or not something was a Christmas movie or not? And, and I said, well, n maybe maybe not. I mean, some of these things I get a, a release month. I get uh, it's a comedy. It's a drama movie. Uh, I'm not sure I could tell you that that's a uh, that that's a Christmas movie or not a Christmas movie. And I started to say, well, machine learning algorithms are really good at finding hidden relationships, but even they are going to need some sufficient level of detail. And so I said, well, what, what, what additional detail could I give it? And I looked at the data again, and I noticed I had a keyword set that had a lot of uh, different data for uh, different things. Um, so we could find out uh, you know, some data about uh, various movies and identify sort of some, some keywords associated with things. And so I said, well, well, hold on a second. Just looking at these keywords, can I determine if something is likely a Christmas movie or not? And I looked at a couple examples, and I thought, okay, well, is this a Christmas movie? Well, no, that looks like Jurassic Park. <laughs> uh, so that's probably not a Christmas movie. And I figured that if I could look at that, the machine learning algorithm could look at that. And I said, okay, well, what about this one? Okay, yeah, that's 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 Home Alone. That's definitely a Christmas movie. Um, I could see, you know, there's some things in here that would tell me that this is a Christmas movie. I thought, well, let's figure out how to teach our machine learning algorithm um, these same things so it can make the same inferences. So I loaded up the keywords data set and I merged that together with the movies data set. And I came up with basically a column here with all the keywords that something would have, and something might have a lot of keywords associated with each movie. Uh, and I needed to sort of get this out of JSON format and into a, a format that was a little easier for it to read and understand and work with. So that's really what I set out to do. And ultimately, I wound up creating one column per keyword, and I would set things to a zero or a one, depending on whether or not it had, a, uh, uh, had that keyword associated with a movie. But this had some pretty serious flaws. Specifically, there wound up being 14,000 columns. That was a lot of columns, and it moved the size of my data set up to uh, a gigabyte um, versus you know a few megs. But as I started looking at this, and I started reducing it down to maybe 100 columns, my performance didn't get any better. And I started saying, well, wait a minute, why isn't it getting any better? Well, I, I'm giving it only the most popular keyword tags. Some of these are, are definitely on our uh, Christmas movies. It should be able to take a look at these and see 
uh, see that things are Christmas movies or aren't. So what's going on? Why isn't the performance getting any better? And I went to bed, and the next day I woke up, and I bumped into a LinkedIn poll. And the LinkedIn poll was talking about something, and it introduced me to this term I'd never heard before in data science, which is uh, the curse of dimensionality. And so I Googled it, and the curse of dimensionality winds up being uh, this factor where uh, if you have so many different columns and not a lot of data to associate with those, those columns, it becomes very hard for machine learning programs to make inferences about those columns because things are so different from each other that there's not enough similarities for it to latch onto. So unless I was to scale up significantly the actual Christmas movies in our data set, it had no hope whatsoever of finding a good relationship. And so I said, okay, well, I can't go wide. I can't have a ton of columns like this. What if I take all this stuff and I convert it down to a single comma separated value list, a list of commas, uh, or a list of values separated by column, com commas? Uh, could I then take those, those keywords and sort of parse it out and generate this comma separated value list? And could I have a chance uh, that it's going to give me a good result that a machine learning routine can find. Um, and it wound up actually having a pretty good result. So I exported that and I uh, sent it off to the machine learning algorithm. And it, uh, well, let's just take a look at how, how it performed. So here we are again in, in Azure Machine Learning Studio. I'm going to take a look at Heroic Wire, which is my final model, uh, the one that I used the comma separated values for, for um, keywords. So this model was a classification run, and I enabled deep learning. And it came up with a random forest, again with a max ABS sc scaler. Um, and it, uh, it, it performed pretty well. It took about 26 minutes to train. But let's take a look at its uh, various metrics. So the metrics here, we see a lot of ones. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, we see don't we don't see a whole lot of uh, any sort of a curve here, uh, meaning that everything is is the area under this curve. Um, That's a really good characteristic. Uh, this is a very well performing model. So if we look at our confusion matrix again, we can see the true negative. So things that were not mo Christmas movies that were that we're correctly predicting or classifying as not a Christmas movie. And this is our things that are Christmas movies that our algorithm is classifying as Christmas movies. So here we actually managed to get something with 100% accuracy, uh, which is pretty interesting. So when we see something with this level of performance, we really, really, really need to take a look at, at how that model works. So here we are looking at the feature importance for this model. And I can go in here and I can select which, which features I want to look at. And so I want to take a look at the feature of the keywords. I want to see how, how important the keywords wound up being. So I'll select keywords here. And then I want to see basically um, what they were associated with, right? So let's see what our classification runs wound up creating. And I'm actually going to click on these to give them some coloring uh, so that all four of these here on the right in the true positive uh, group, we can kind of see um, them styled a little bit different than these ones that are true negatives. So these are the, the keywords that are not associated with Christmas movies according to our uh, algorithm. So uh, we can take a look at this and see like, okay, if you see these things, it's generally not going to be a Christmas movie. You see things over here, such as Santa Claus, Nerd, which is amusing. I haven't figured out why it classified that. Uh, Faith, Gift, Bell, Beard, North Pole, Shoot, Trestle, Ticket, Christmas. Yeah, those are likely to be associated with a Christmas movie. Um, you can kind of see a lot of little things. Um, the Killer Santa Claus tag got included here, which is interesting. Uh, there's a lot of interesting little points of data here. Uh, so you can take a look at this and see the little things that it thought was important. These keywords were associated with Christmas movies. So we can take a look over here at the uh, probability of this thing uh, being a Christmas movie. So I'll say probability of one. So this is going to give us things that should be a Christmas movie. 
So we can see that these guys over here, the Santa Claus, Nerd, Faith, Gift, uh, that's a really strong indicator that's probably a Christmas movie. Uh, these ones over here, yeah, these are, you know, these, these indicate that it might be a Christmas movie, but it's maybe not as persuasive as these ones over here versus these guys over here, you know, that's going to say, Hey, we're probably not a, uh, uh, a, a, a Christmas movie, uh, with the tag of horror anthology. Yeah. That's probably a good indicator there. Um, so this will tell you a little bit more about your model's performance and, and why it's reasoning, uh, the things that it's reasoning. Um, but once you have a model that you're happy with, which in this case I was, you know, very happy with the metrics and the uh, the keywords here made sense. It made sense that it, that it used those to to find the relationships it did using this deep learning. Um, you can go in and you can actually go in and deploy your model. So here we are specifying the uh, type of deployment we want, whether it's going to be a real time uh, processing engine or uh, whether it's going to be in batches. Uh, we're going to specify whether we wanted to use Azure Kubernetes uh, uh, service or if we want to use uh, container instances. Um, I'm a cheap, cheap man, so I'm going to give it the uh, <laughs> the cheapest thing I can, so the smallest compute size I can and only one instance. I really only want to make one prediction here. So that's sort of what I'm, I'm doing with that. We'll fast forward a little bit to see that uh, deployment, and uh, once that's up, we'll we'll send it a test run. Okay, so that actually wound up taking quite a bit of time. Um, I had actually failed to create that because I ran out of my CPU quota. You can only have a certain number of uh, resources of a certain type, a certain size in Azure unless you get your quota extended. Uh, so I wound up going with the uh, prior one that I'd used with this. So uh, here we are at the appropriately yet randomly named uh, Jolly Ocean. Uh, so this is going to be the, the endpoint that we can use to test whether or not uh, a specific movie is a, is a um, Christmas movie or is not. Uh, so this is using the trained machine learning model that we took with the metrics of. So I can uh, click on test and I can give it some uh, test data uh, and call out to the endpoint with that data, uh, which is kind of cool. So let's take some data that I have here uh, for Die Hard. I'm going to put it in here. This is just some JSON data uh, representing that movie. Uh, so you can see it's an action movie. It is a thriller movie. We can see the overview, uh, release month, release quarter, runtime, the tagline, the title, and the list of keywords here. And we're going to tell it we want to predict things. We get back a single result here. Uh, this is a JSON result, and it says result, and then array of results, one. So this is predicting a classification. It's specifically predicting the value of the label column. If we remember our label column, well, that was is Christmas movie. So it is predicting that given this data here for this particular movie that it's not seen before, before up to this point, the value for is Christmas movie should be one. Therefore, Azure is saying that Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Or rather, it's more a Christmas movie than it is not a Christmas movie, is what it's saying. Now, I played around with this before when I got this initial result, and I took a look at this and said, what can I do to make this not a Christmas movie? Uh, and I played with this a little bit. What I found was that if I removed both the Christmas party keyword and, where are we, the Christmas Eve keyword, that was enough to convince it that Die Hard was not a Christmas movie. However, Die Hard is not Die Hard if it doesn't have a Christmas party. If you don't have your ho ho ho, now I've got a machine gun. Um, you don't have all of that, the trappings of Christmas there. That's not Die Hard. That's a different movie. And Azure says that movie wouldn't be a Christmas movie. But the movie that we got, the movie with our Christmas party on Christmas Eve, that's Die Hard, and that is a Christmas movie, according to Azure. So I couldn't help but wonder how certain was Azure of this, because it, it could have been, it was like a 55% chance that this thing's a Christmas movie, a 45% chance it's not, and it just says, okay, well, I gotta give it a zero or a one, so I'm gonna give it a one, because it's closer to that than it is to the zero. Um, and so I actually made some tweaks, and I ran this again as a, a regression algorithm this time. Now, regression is used to predict some sort of a numerical value. 
but I gave it the same target. I gave it the uh, the target of the um, is Christmas movie. So I wanted to predict a value between zero and one. And the result that I get should be some degree of a confidence level. Now, I don't know how scientific this particular approach is. I'm still early on in, in my data science approach. I've, I've taken a bunch of courses uh, through Coursera. I've gone through a bunch of stuff from Microsoft Learn, but I'm just starting out on my master's degree. So I have no idea if this is a common thing to do or not, but I plugged it in, I submitted the request, and I got back a 0 0.95. Meaning that if Azure had to predict this value, it would say probably a 95% confidence that Die Hard is a Christmas movie. So I think that's fairly conclusive. I think that's pretty awesome. Now, you may not agree with the decisions I made. You may not agree with the data set I chose. You may not agree with the ways that I filtered out some of these things in my approach to this. That's fine. It doesn't necessarily matter the end result of this. My my key thing for you is I want you to understand that automated ML is awesome and you can use it without a deep, deep understanding of data science. You need to have a certain degree of understanding of data science in order to structure your data in such a way that you're not going to get a biased result. Uh, but it's enough that you can get started and build something cool. And it can teach you little bits of things about machine learning. So it can tell you a little bit about uh, the algorithms it's using. And you can take a look at the metrics and Google the things you don't know. Uh, you can learn a lot just by looking at uh, automated ML. And I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, well, boy, I, I really wish that I had uh, used data set versioning. I really wish that I had uh, uh, I've done a couple other things differently. I, I really wish I had done a little bit more using the ML SDK. I've done some experimentation with that, but this whole experiment was really run through this web web portal user interface. So you keep playing with things. Um, you want to try to replicate my, my experiment? Um, let me know what you do differently, and let me know what results you get. I, I'd love to hear from you. You want to do something different? That's awesome. Go out to Kaggle.com. You can get all sorts of other data sets. Uh, you can get projects to, to take um, to take on, including uh, a number of things that are really kind of curated projects, like uh, predict whether some whether or not somebody would have survived the Titanic based on information about their their ticket and when they got on the the boat and things like that. Uh, so there's some pretty classic things you can do out there to learn data science. Uh, but this is awesome. I really hope that you enjoyed this. If you want to learn more, I've got three res resources for you. Uh, first of all. I have a lot of stuff out there on YouTube at uh, mattondatascience.com. We'll redirect you to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm pushing out a lot more content specifically related to ML Studio uh, and Azure and uh, Microsoft's AI and machine learning offerings. And I aim to continue that as I go on through my master's program. Secondly, um, I everything that I'm doing via video, I'm also writing an article for. So if you prefer prefer that in a, in a written form, uh, you can check out my articles at accessibleai.dev. Um, and finally, if you really want to learn a little bit more about machine learning, I would really recommend that you go through the Microsoft Learn materials. Now they're linked to at the, at the homepage of the portal. Um, you can click on that view all learning modules and it's going to take you directly to Microsoft Learn and you can kind of see a list of the, 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 uh, modules that they recommend you go through. And there's a ton of them. Uh, I've gone through many of these. I've not gone through all of these by any means. Uh, I'm still growing myself. If you want a more structured way of learning things, I would recommend certification. Start with the AI 900 or uh, Azure AI Fundamental Certification. I thought it was a fantastic program to go through. You're going to learn a lot more about AI and machine learning in the process. And then you can move on to something related to ML engineering or data engineering or data science uh, through the other certifications. So um, you can also connect uh, with me on Twitter at IntegerMan, and I would love to connect with you and just hear about the stuff that you're doing. You can hit me up on LinkedIn as well, but make sure you send me a message so I understand you know, who you are, how you found me, what you want, that kind of a thing. But I hope you build some awesome things. Let me know what you do. Uh, I, I would love to learn more from your experiences and uh, see all sorts of really cool projects. Uh, happy coding.